The Eternals just made their cinematic debut and bored audiences everywhere. Although I didn't enjoy the film, I thought the Icarus Superman comparisons were fun. Although, I'm pretty sure no one's filming the fight in London, so how does Fastus' son see this? But whatever. Most of the film is nonsense. For instance, the whole getting everyone together plot, you know, most of the film, is solved if they find Makari first, who is in the ship, and they know where that is. Anyway, this means Superman exists in the MCU. Yes, this is likely just a homage because Chloe Zhao's take on Icarus was inspired by Snyder's Superman. And Kevin Feige has said how he, the creatives, watch Richard Donner's Superman before starting on any new movie. And yes, this can be easily explained that Clark and the DCU are fictional characters, but they must have known how people were going to react to the reveal that Superman, Batman and Alfred exist in the MCU. Not only do they exist in the MCU proper, but also in its multiverses. Spider-Man No Way Home will soon be hitting cinema screens, in which Peter Parker will get help from Doctor Strange to try and put his secret identity genie back in the bottle. Which of course goes wrong and chaos follows. Now there's rumours all sorts of characters will be appearing, and the two persistent ones are previous Spider-Men Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield. The thing is, if the movie is going to include Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield, then it has to be the actual versions of their Peter Parker that we've seen in previous movies and not an alternate take on them. Otherwise, what's the point in having them? It would dash audience expectations as people will want to see what has happened to them in the years since and lower the stakes as they be versions that we don't care about. It would be a cop-out. And so, Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man must be the one from the original Raimi-verse, where Superman also exists in some form. Meaning that not if, when the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man becomes canon in the MCU and his universe joins it, Superman becomes a multiversal character too. And while this is also easily explained that the reference was done when superhero movies were in their infancy and it was just a shorthand for the audience to understand how Peter can't do everything, you know what other superheroes referenced in these movies? The man responsible for the timey-wimey shenanigans in the first place, Doctor Strange himself. But what does this all mean? Given the Russo brothers' comments about making a Secret Wars movie, and Jim Shooter recently saying Marvel contacted him to make sure Secret Wars was theirs, and giving minimal financial compensation for writing it, I'd guess that the big payoff for the next couple phases will be a multiversal Secret Wars, some combination of the original and Jonathan Hickman's. Following that, I'm going to throw out the wide and near baseless speculation that after the multiversal tampering of Secret Wars, we'll be seeing Marvel vs DC the movie in 2030. I mean, it's going to happen at some point. Mark my words, it all starts here.